Right now, many kids are gearing up for long days by the pool, others at camp. Some kids are going to be spending their summer in the classroom. After more than two years in a pandemic and a lag in education, a lot of classes going virtual, uh, schools are reimagining how to help students achieve greater academic success, especially if they've become distracted or saw failing grades over the past couple of semesters or years. Now, according to thinkimpact.com, it's estimated that more than 3.4 million students were in summer schools in the year 2020. Last year, summer school programs increased, uh, but were largely focused on students who had fallen behind during the pandemic. This year, those same programs are being offered, but accelerated in enrichment programs, uh, plus a mix of online and in-person classes are being offered as well. Dennis Roach, president of school tracking site Burbio, is joining us live from New York City this morning. Thanks so much, Dennis, for being with us. For summer school, is the purpose now to help kids catch up, or is it to accelerate them and to actually be additional schooling so that they can have a leg up as they move towards, as they matriculate, as they go through their grades? Well, it's both. It's always been a little bit of learning recovery, and that part is being extended and expanded because during COVID, even schools that were in person had students that fell behind. Many of them were opting out of in person where they could. So you've got a big expansion of essentially the recovery. And then, yes, where they're also adding enrichment programs for students who might not actually have fallen behind the minimum standards, but have certainly fallen behind where they would otherwise have been. So you have an expansion of free programs, you have expansion of enrichment programs, you have summer camps being introduced, community partnerships, as well as in some places, the expansion of virtual programs to supplement all that. What are you hearing? Because I, my sister's a teacher actually, but I'm hearing from a lot of different teachers and students and, and parents, frankly, who are concerned about their kids and, and what they went through over the past couple of years. Do you think that by now, a lot of students have felt that they're back on track or caught up? No, I think this is going to be a very long process because let's face it, as recently as four or five months ago, you had Omicron and you had schools sending home kids for quarantining and things like that. So this has really been a two year process. You've gotten you've had a much more normal spring on a lot of ways, but this is going to be a, a multi multi year process for recovery. And I think everybody recognizes that. What is something that's being used as, as a catapult uh, for some of these students to engage their interests? Because there are kids who are so smart, they can take the test, they can do the homework, and it looks like they're catching it, but really they're just memorizing it for a moment, but not really getting that deep educational experience. Well, there's, there's a lot of expansion of tutoring programs, and tutoring comes in a number of different ways. It can come in person, and that's generally considered the most important. Uh, it's high frequency. You want to do it multi-days, multi-times a week, as well as uh, a low, uh, low ratio of student to teacher. So that's really important. That's been expended, extended with online. We also see some fun enrichment programs. We've seen things like arts, gamification, various ways to make school fun for students at all levels of educational development uh, is another big initiative we're seeing. I have one more question for you, and I think it's for the parents watching at home. I think so many want to do the best thing for their kids, but they're swamped and busy and adjusting to this very strange era that we've all been living in the past couple of years. What would you tell moms and dads to keep it real with them for how to best support their children right now? Well, I think it's, a, it's really about a process that's going to take a while. In other words, don't rush it. I think this mm -hmm. is there's been so much disruption, and every child is very different. Some children, uh, every child had to make uh, had to had to adjust during COVID. For some, it was worse than others. If their activities and and were built around in person, uh, they lost a lot of that. Um, others, not so much. So I think the the idea is to just uh, take to take your time with it and not try and rush the transition back. Yeah, look at the long game and, and don't be thinking, oh, we, you just need one more summer to get caught up, honey, and you're going to be fine. It's like, let's be patient. Uh, Dennis Roach, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.